everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on my first online beta test Chasing and Reposé class. I want to talk to you before we get started tracing our um, design onto our metal. I want to talk to you just a bit about the engraving tools. What I speak about in the video is a small engraving pen that I purchased from Amazon. It's $22.95. You can usually get it about overnight or two day shipping if you have Prime. I know we might be a little late for this, but I wanted to show it to you. It takes two AAA batteries in the end, and then there's a little button here that you push down that uh, rotates the bit. You get two diamond bits. One's round and one is pointed. And it's pretty small in diameter. I would say this one is probably no more than about a millimeter in diameter. This works really beautifully because it works like a pencil so you can draw with it. I chose it because I have a difficult time with the number 30 handpiece and using it and drawing with it. If you do well with it, that's fine. You can use your flex shaft. The other thing that you can do is there's, there will be a photo inserted here uh, after I talk about this of a quick change handpiece. If you have a quick change handpiece that goes onto your flex shaft, you can certainly use that because they're more streamlined and easier to utilize. If you don't have any of that and choose not to purchase a small engraving tool, you can just take a scribe and I will talk to you. You're just gonna use it to draw with and trace your design onto your metal after we do the carbon pattern. Now I'd like to talk to you about the length and the width of the material that you're going to cut from your 22 gauge copper sheet. Approximately a three and a half inch wide or three and three quarters inch wide to five and three quarters or six inches long piece. This will accommodate your design. It will also allow for a half inch border around all around the edge of your material, which you will need during this process. I need you to anneal it to a soft or bright cherry red, pickle it, dry it really well, and then you're going to scotch by both sides of the material as this puts a tooth on the mess of the metal and the carbon transfers to the metal readily. You will also, before you start drawing your design, you're gonna find the center of your metal, draw it on the front, you're gonna draw a center line in the back, and then you'll be able to line your design up on your material when you get to that point. You don't need to have a piece of plywood, so disregard that. What you're going to use is the back of your pitch block because I believe you all have a pitch block from Fabrizio's class. Number one, you can have a little tripod. This one was pretty inexpensive, has flexible legs, and it has a head that opens and closes for your phone. You can adjust this if you need to get closer. You can adjust this little guy, wrap it around the edge of your bench. I mean, there's just lots of things you can do. Insert your phone here, have your pitch block in front of your tripod. Your hands are gonna be in this area. And I need to be able to see what's going on when you're working here. If we find out that the tripod doesn't allow you to zoom in to your piece on, in the pitch, then I suggest you have a piece, a roll of duct tape or tape and I squeezed mine so it's kind of oval. And then what you'll do is you'll insert your phone in between here and it actually allows you to rotate your phone back and forth. There's enough friction fit on the width of this that it should hold your phone in place and work with your phone here, shooting down into here and, and 
your pitch block is in front of your phone. Um, well, I would suggest you guys play with your tripod and your and figure out if the tripod's going to work or if you need to use something like this. It doesn't have to be duct tape but a big roll of tape of some sort that's a tall roll will really work really well to stick your phone in here. Right, coming up. I chose a botanical image and we're gonna do just this part of the bulb of the tulip and the leaf. And so you're going to print it on to a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper, plain white paper. Then you're going to fold that paper in half, lengthwise, okay? Um, and then what you're going to do, I'm gonna show you how to transfer this image to the back side of your paper. So you end up having, here's the front of one and here's the back that I already transferred to. And you will see that they're mirror images of one another. In order to transfer the image to the back of your paper, you're gonna take a piece of carbon paper and you're gonna take the carbon side here and you're actually going to put it on the back like that. Then you're gonna place this down on the tabletop and you are going to slowly and meticulously trace around the design and stay on the lines. And I would trace with a pen and really take your time. Being precise is one of the most important things about this on, um, because when you repose this and chase this, you want a precise drawing of what you're doing. Um, once you've done that, then you remove your carbon paper out of copper sheet. I actually drew the width of the material that I thought I was gonna use onto the paper. My copper is actually wider than, you can see the shadow, wider than my design, but that's okay. I'm okay with that because it's copper. If it were silver, I'd probably be more precise in how I cut this. But once you decide, this is about three and a half by five and three quarters long, but I found my center once I made that drawing on here, of the three and three quarters, or three and a half by five and three quarters, found the center, drew a light line on it, and then you can line it up in here with that line on your copper. Once you've done that, then you're going to take some double stick tape, and I use removable double stick tape, and I put it, on my metal, doesn't matter if it's on the front or the back because I have a little excess sticking out on each corner and I do it up here at the top on this particular design. It'll change with each design you do. Then you uh, put your metal in there, you push down on that tape so your metal doesn't move and your paper doesn't move. I'm gonna show you the front. I'm gonna slide my carbon paper carbon side against the metal. Okay, so, so I've slid it in. It's not all the way over here because I don't have anything over there, but I make sure that the carbon comes over to this area. Once again, you're going to take your pen and you're going to meticulously and slowly trace your pattern. Because you did the scotch bright on the metal, it puts a tooth on the metal which allows the carbon to transfer onto the material. You'll so do. if you're having troubles with your carbon paper, there are many different types of carbon paper out there. Some work better than others on metal, but that's why you do the scotch bright because it gives a little tooth for that carbon to grab hold of. Once you've done the front side, then you pull out the carbon and you will slide it underneath the back side, just like you did the front and you will then trace your design on the back, okay?
once you've finished transferring your design on both sides of your metal, you're gonna take it out of the out of there, out of the paper, between the paper. You take off the double stick tape away, and your next step is going to be to engrave over those carbon lines that you traced because the carbon will rub off during any work process. So I suggest do your tracing of your carbon on both sides of your metal before you start engraving. You're going to take that little diamond tip and you're gonna, once again, trace over your whole design. Don't trace down that center line, just your carbon design and flip it over and do the, the other side with the carbon design on it. So I'm gonna do a, a little quick video to show you how that works. All right, I didn't do the whole thing, but when you see the light kind of flash across it, you can see the lines that I did. You don't have to have a heavy hand on this. You um, actually don't want it super deep. You just want to be able to see the lines. So if you're, when your hand goes across the surface of that metal when you're working, the, if the carbon rubs off, then you have a scratch mark basically. All right, that's what you have to have accomplished before the class. Okay, if you have any questions, please contact me. You have all my contact information in the email. All the best, I'll see you at class.